We're going to rock and roll with Kevin Dana, the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors next. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube where we do every live show, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started, where Kevin Dana brought up the great point of VPN, baby. So if you're in California or a state where FanDuel is not legal, we're not endorsing this, but just giving you an option with VPN, <laughs> you can still play FanDuel. You can follow Kevin Dana on Twitter at Kevo408, the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors. Um, have we beat, uh, first of all, for those in the chat, um, I'm going to get to all of your questions at the end of the show. I'm marking the ones that stick out, the questions. So don't think we're ignoring you. I'm saving that for the end of the show. Th- did you want to say something, Kevin? I'm sorry. Did you have your hand up? Oh, no, no, like no. you're no. a student. <laughs> sorry. No, no. I, sorry. I, I realized I wasn't seeing the comments, and it was because I was uh, not on the right tab. Okay. Now, now, now I'm looking through all the... We have a very interactive show. We, I mean, you have a very interactive show, Cyrus. Like, well, you're, you used to be a part of this very regularly, and I hope at some point uh, we can make that happen again on a more consistent basis. But uh, no, the audience is amazing, dude. I, I This program doesn't exist without them. Thank you to everyone. Kai um, Soto and, question in here? Oh, this is this is unreal. There's a what question? There's a Kai Soto question. There is, here. and that was one of the ones I starred. We will get to that. We're going <laughs> to save that for the end of the show. Again, all your questions will be addressed, at least the ones that are specific to the G League or something that's per- pertinent to the show. Um, so, but so Chris Paul, do we do we are we done with that? Is there anything you want to add? I, I don't have anything more to add. What do you think you about do, Dario Sharich? That was a, you know, the, the Dub Nation was sitting tight for weeks, waiting for some sort of news from free agency. Uh, this Warriors team, even with Sharich, is still pretty small. The average height of an NBA player, to put it in perspective, is 6'7", uh, and the Warriors starting lineup does not reach that. Um, and and they had no backup center. Uh, you know, Trace Jackson Davis and Dario Sharich bring much needed size. I personally love the addition. Um, I remember seeing him when the Warriors played the Thunder last year, thinking to myself, why is he not on the Warriors? And now he is. Um, what are your thoughts on the Dario Sharich edition? Look, I know he he had like what was it, the torn ACL that he got during the NBA Finals in 2021 with the Phoenix right. Suns. And so like, you know, he missed an entire season. Last year was his first year back. I expect him to, you know, kind of be better, uh, you know, kind of more like his pre-ACL self. Uh, I like the move a lot. Uh, if you think back now, this was very early in his career. Like Dario Sharich was seen as like a centerpiece of the process era of Philadelphia 76ers. Like Joel Embiid came up, some people might remember this, like came up with the nickname with the help of Philly fans, Feds. F for Fultz, Markel Fultz, E for Embiid, D for Dario Sharich, huh. and S for Ben Simmons. Like it was those four that were going to lead the Sixers to the promised land. Now they never let him pass the second round, but like he was seen as a part of that. You look back to his second season. I mean, yeah, this guy was 14.6, 6.7, 2.6 points, boards and assists on five attempts f- from deep per game, 39%. Like this guy can play. And I know that was six years ago now, but like, even last year, 46% from the field, 39% from downtown. Like, he's a skilled big. It, it, it's a position that the, the Warriors desperately needed another skilled big or two. And I, I think they got two of them this year uh, with, with Trace and, and especially with Dario. That was a huge, huge signing and, and great value to get him at, right? Like, for the veteran minimum, which, hell yeah. Look, like, I think they, I think they needed him. Uh, I think, like, I, yeah, I think that was a big, big signing. So I, I feel, I feel, I feel pretty decent knowing that the Warriors don't want to play big, anyways. Like, look, they're never going to have an Orlando Magic lineup of like Wendell Carter, uh, Franz Wagner, right? Uh, you know, a Bull Bull. Well, now Bull Bull's not on their team anymore. Sons, but like, yeah. 
they're not going to have like this three seven footer starting lineup or you know three guys six ten plus. But like for what they do, I think they have more reasonable size now. Absolutely, like no, that. wholeheartedly agree. Whole, yeah. And, yeah, you know, I've tried to explain this to my audience, and Kevin, maybe you could do so better. Um, in your opinion, why do you think Steve Kerr has this affinity for smaller lineups and and shorter players? What are your thoughts on that? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, like, Thanks, sir. yeah. Well, I've tried to explain it as like, this: they, they won a title in 2022, essentially with like this kind of roster makeup. So, right. Like, I mean, you, you had Belly, you had Otto Porter Jr. Um, yeah. So, that, like, that, that was isn't exactly the same kind of player, but like more in that mold. Right, right. I'm with you on that. I, my theory has always been similar to Don Nelson is that smaller players are faster. They space the floor easier offensively. And maybe most importantly, they're, they, they are a lot easier to play in a switch heavy defense. Yeah. Um, I, I'm. That's my guess. You know, I mean, I, Steve Kerr's never really given like a, a straight answer on that from what I've seen. But um, that's my theory on why they love to go small. Um, and, and again, we'll get to all the, the chat questions again at the end of the show. Uh, when we come back, i got to give some love to a sponsor real fast, but I want to get your, your opinion on the draft picks. The Warriors got two picks, uh, Brandon Pajemski with the number 19 pick. Um, I've been a little, I'm not been critical of him. There's no way you can judge anyone negatively, especially in summer league. That's just too small of a sample size. It's too immediate following the draft. Um, so I'm not critical of Pajemski, but I am a little critical of the Warriors pass up and Cam Whitmore. I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what the Warriors with the number 19 pick and Trace Jackson Davis, who I, I've been just absolutely ecstatic about. Uh, first got to give some love again to FanDuel. This is a two part show. So if you're watching the live version, apologies for the redundancy. Uh, if you're watching the recording, this might be the first time you're listening to this. Today's episode again is brought to you by Locked On Podcast Network's official sports book, FanDuel. And right now it's baseball season. It's hotter than a you-know-what. Take your first swing at betting on Major League Baseball and get 10 times your first bet amount. Bonus bets up to $200. That's right. If you bet 20 bucks, you can get back $200 in bonus bets, whether you win or lose. And as Kevin Dana has enlightened us today, if you get VPN, you might be able to play FanDuel regardless of where you are. I'm suddenly a lot more intrigued about VPN than I have been in a long time. And again, you could get 200 bucks spent for whether you win or lose. That's incredible. And it's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you win instantly. It's safe withdrawals. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Every dayers, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. That's where we announce all of our guests, showtimes, etc. We're hoping to have a Warriors assistant coach on the show very soon. Uh, uh, a man I, I consider a friend who is the best PR man in all of sports and has been for decades, Raymond Ritter. Uh, is helping with that. Thank you so much, sir, in advance. Uh, Kevin Dana, the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors, is joining us right now. You can follow him on Twitter, at Kevo408. What are your thoughts on these draft picks, man? Let's start with Brandon Pajemski. That's the harder one of the two. Let's get that out of the way. Um, again, I, I have nothing against him. He might end up being a fantastic pick. Um, I absolutely love the fact that the dude averaged over eight rebounds a game as a 6'4", 6'5", guard. I love the fact that he shot over 43% from deep uh, in his second year in college at Santa Clara. Um, but again, passing up on Ken Whitmore, that kind of stung to me. What are your thoughts on those two situations? Ken Whitmore, whether you agree with the Warriors passing on him, and your thoughts on Brandon Pajemski, who plays just down the street from where you live. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll say that the, the, the draft room – uh, watched Cam Whitmore a lot more than I watched him. So they have their reasons. I'll say I did the 2022 Nike Hoop Summit. I broadcast that game that Cam Whitmore was a part of. So that's that, like Dariq Whitehead was the MVP of that game. Cam Whitmore's in that game. Jarris Walker's in that game. Keontae George, Grady Dick. Like So like the 2023 draft class was like basically the 2022 Nike Hoop Summit. 
I really like Cam Whitmore watching that game. Dude's explosive. I know there yes. were injury concerns with Cam Whitmore. Um, and like apparently like serious injury concerns. I don't know, like, you know, and that's Which all, all went away the moment summer league started, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what, like, um, but I like I can't I I wasn't in that room. I don't know why they chose Pajemski over Cam Whitmore. I will say, like what Brandon Pajemski did at Santa Clara is like very rarely done. Mm-hmm. Like taking Santa Clara to the NIT, that is that is a feat in and of itself. Agreed. Like, I understand there's some other good players there, like guy like Keyshawn Justice, really solid player there. And, and Carlos Stewart, I believe his name is a, a, another really athletic dude that they have. And and they're working in they I think they were registering him this year. They Oh, did you freeze? Did yeah, like Kevin another Dillon? really oh, good dude that's going to be playing. What? Was Sorry, I not you froze here for a second? For that was weird. You're, you're back. You're back. You're oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. But like to go from playing four minutes a game at Illinois to leading Santa Clara to the NIT is is like a huge feat. And like, what, well, it was 19, 8, and 3. I think there was like only a handful of people that did that in the country last year in college basketball. Ooh. I am not concerned at all of his bad shooting percentage in summer league. You see this with rookies all the time where they it's like, yeah, they've been working out shooting the NBA three, but they haven't been playing shooting the NBA. Three. Right. <laughs> you can work out all you want, but it's a different line. And like Jordan Poole was a sub 30% three point shooter in summer league, his first year. Oh, Steph. Uh, and, well, yeah. Steph's, what was he like 27 right or something like that? I, I saw something about that I, I I don't know the number off the top of my head but like I'm not worried about that yeah he was turnover prone um he also did a lot of decent things with the ball too he had that near triple double the 10 9 and 10 game yes he did uh he knows how to make some really good reads I thought his passing when he wasn't turning it over his passing did pop um, and like, look, I think if he can rebound at the level he did in summer league, it shows you that that like that 8.8 rebounds per game in Santa Clara wasn't exactly a fluke. Right. Um, so like, look, is he going to play a lot this year? Considering who's ahead of him? Probably not. But like, and I know they wanted guys who had a little more, you know, experience and stuff. And like, he is a two year college player, even if he didn't play a ton at Illinois his first year. There is he has a he is a little bit longer in the tooth than some of the you know other recent draft picks, um, so yeah. Look, it, I, I'm I'm not I'm gonna with I don't have any serious judgment on Brandon Pajemski yet, right? Because I don't think how himself. can you, right? Yeah, I, you I, can't. I, I'm not either. I the only the only negative I have about that whole first round of the draft was just again passing up on Ken Whitmore because. I I actually spent some time researching the draft this year and it was shocking to see him fall. So when it got to number 19 and he was still available, I, th- I, th- I thought the Warriors were going to pounce. But you're absolutely right, dude. It, there's no way sh- in, in no way, shape or form would it be logical, would it be rational, reasonable to judge a player at this point? It's 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 it'd be ludicrous to do so. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, I know, like, I, I thought you could see why the Warriors drafted in the summer league. I thought you saw the flashes. Look, it wasn't con- it wasn't like as consistent as some people wanted it to be. But, like, I could tell you the Warriors coaches couldn't care less that he shot whatever low 20 per 26%, whatever it was. Like, they don't care at all about shooting percentage in Summer League. Like, I remember talking with Johnny West uh, with uh, Jordan Poole's Summer League, a rookie Summer League. And, like, uh, like he, like, could have been less – he couldn't have been less concerned about Jordan Poole not being able to hit shots in Summer League. Like – he, they know the process, and they're like, yeah, he, he's he's where he needs to be in the process. So I, I got I got no beef with the pick. Uh, I got no I got no beef with who he is right now. Um, we'll see. Like, don't expect him to average 10, 10 5, and five as a rookie. He's not going to get the minutes. Uh, I, I expect I'll see him, uh, him a decent bid in Santa Cruz next year, as they do with pretty much every rookie, especially someone who's drafted nineteenth overall it isn't a lottery pick. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, for when he does get assigned to the Sea Dogs. I'm totally with you. Um, and then there is the the number 57 pick in the draft, which was Trace Jackson Davis. 
This was a player. Um, I had Damon Bruce on the show a few weeks ago. He went to Indiana. Um, he watches Indiana basketball games religiously. And I have another friend who also uh, went to IU, watches these games religiously. And they both were telling me before the draft that they liked Trace Jackson Davis more so than even Jalen Hood Shafino, uh, who, I, who I picked with the locked on mock draft for the Warriors. Uh, he was he ended up going uh, to the Lakers. Um, I love Trace Jackson Davis. It's incredible to me. He fell that far in the draft. I think he can play immediately. Um, what are your thoughts on Trace Jackson Davis as a member of the Warriors? Yeah, again, so like with Brandon Pajemski, I'm not going to judge him one way or another, right? I will say I watched him play my Stanford Cardinal in the Maui Invitational when it was in Asheville, North Carolina due to COVID right. two years ago, and he put like 31 on them. I'm like, Ooh. who the hell is Trace Jackson Davis, and why is he dominating us? Because <laughs> I, I didn't watch a ton of – I wasn't able to watch a ton of college basketball at the time. Right. But he, he stood out as a sophomore. I'm like, oh, this guy kind of looks like a pro right now. And I'll also say the Monday of draft week, I looked at five mock drafts, full two-round mock drafts, and Trace Jackson J Davis was in the first round in four of those five mock drafts. So, wow. look, I know that James Dunleavy being his agent and, you know, the connection to Mike Dunleavy Jr., that certainly helped once he got to the second round. Like, look, uh, if you're going to give him a two-way contract, don't draft him. Because uh, we we got a guarantee elsewhere, and so like right. that helped. So like you know he probably didn't fall quote unquote to fifty seven. Like if it wasn't for that stuff, right, right. But, but, like, but he was a legitimate first round draft prop. Yeah, and they got him with like the third to last, was well, second to last pick in the draft. So like that is incredible value. That that is a great kind of a maneuvering done by Mike Dunleavy there to pick totally. him up at 57. Totally. Like, that's incredible. Uh, and, and in the two games in summer league, he was really good in the minutes he played. I, I saw him personally. I was there at, at his last game uh, against the Toronto Raptors. And yeah, I mean, he looked really solid. He does. Uh, yeah. Another guy that's going to play a lot in Santa Cruz as a second round draft pick. And like Pajemski, really interested to see him. A uh, suit up in Surf City. Oh, dude, I, I can't wait. I'm 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 so ecstatic about the signing. And one of the few perks of the new CBA is being able to sign second round picks of four year deals, which is what the Warriors did. So Trace Jackson Davis is not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, if only they could have done that with Gilbert Arenas back in the day. Oh man, back then he you know, he could only two year point. That was <laughs> yeah, we could do a whole show on that. that, that I'm, I still get pissed. I, it sounds like you are too. I, I still yeah. get pissed thinking about that. Like the war, they just lost him because of some stupid rule. Uh, it, it's insane. Um, all right, let's go to uh, the the chat. There's a lot of questions as we wrap things up here with Kevin Dan of the voice of the Santa Cruz Warriors. You can follow him on Twitter uh, at Kevo four oh eight. Douglas Mike's writes: uh, Your parents just kept your room the way it is for the past ten plus years. Yeah, so uh, I moved out of here October 2012. So yeah, almost eleven years. Um, and yeah, well, like I'm an only child, so uh, there you what, go. What else are they going to do with this room, right? <laughs> and I do have to come back and stay here whenever my mom's out of town. I got to stay here uh, to take care of my dad. So I will say, I don't go. like the, I don't like my bed anymore, though. It's <laughs> I don't know. It, it was it was bought for like when I was ten, so like I've kind of outgrown it. Is it a twin? It's not a. Tw what's the What's the next thing? Full. Up, up it's full. Full size. I think I think this is a full size. The one that like you can fit two got... people, but it, but it's not a queen, right? Yeah, I think that's a full yeah, size. Yeah, I got a queen at the crib at my apartment. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Um, Michael Stubblefield writes, uh, did Guy Santos, who I thought looked great in summer league, uh, did he do enough in Santa Cruz in the summer league to get an invite uh to training camp for one of the two-way spots? Your thoughts? So if I understand this correctly. If there were no contractual concerns, I'd say he's a surefire two-way player. But I think, like, Minas, his club in Brazil, still, like, technically owns his rights. And right. so, like, he would have to either be on the roster or just stashed in okay. the G League. And so I think that, like, kind of uh, muddies the waters a little bit. That so being said, so like, what? Is it TBD for Guy Santos, basically? Like, we don't know yet? Yeah, I don't think we know yet one way or another. 
But I think he's an NBA. I think he is a two-way quality player right now. And I think he's an NBA rotation player in three years. Okay. Like, I love Guy Santos. I And I felt this, like, I think he – he could be the best player in their 2022 draft class out of Patrick Baldwin wow. and Ryan Rolf. He could. I'm not saying he's going to because, I, I I mean, I like I, – I do think Baldwin and Rollins have a nice future. Um, he passes the eye test. Wouldn't you agree with that? Like, he, he's a big physical dude. He, he doesn't – I don't see negatives with him other than yeah, maybe and, and, and The thing about Guy Santos, he works his ass off. Like – he improved his vert by three inches mid-season last year. In wow. the middle of the G League season, got three extra inches on his vert due to all the the work he was doing in you know the weight room training, you know strength and conditioning with Andre Matz and the strength and conditioning guy, sports performance coach, I, I, whatever the official title is. Um, like Andre Matson did a hell of a job with him. Um, cool. So, like Guy Santos. He's a player, and, and, like, I really believe he's an NBA player. There you go. So uh, it doesn't look like this year will be the year where we see him, but for the future of the Warriors, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think there is a place for him. Um, it's just a matter of experience, get, get time. I think time and just the, the right opportunity is is what's what the impediment is there. Uh, Douglas Mikes is curious um, if spending time in the G League will have the same positive impact on Pajemski that it had on Jordan Poole. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for the most part, mo like a, a lot of rookies have benefited from time in the G League with Santa Cruz. Obviously, I have a biased opinion on that. I, I think it's also a little too early to say, like, how, you know, like, I think, I think we're too far away from, like, even any sort of prognostication about what the G League can do for Brandon Pajemski. He's got to get into training camp first with, Golden State and that like how does he look going up against Chris Paul, Stephen Curry, Corey Joseph every day, right? Like that'll give you more of an idea of how ready he is to contribute than you know getting near triple double against the New Orleans Pelicans in summer league. I can't wait for the season, man. I can't believe we have like months before this start. I, I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, hey, I, I need I need a little break, man. Uh, I, need <laughs> I know you do. You do. Wrong. Yeah, you do. I've have been having my breaks. You've been working nonstop until like a week ago. So, um, you know, I don't understand this. Gregory Carter writes, "What is happening with Kai Soto? <laughs> yeah, what, I, like, I, I don't. Why understand. is he such a a, a a a popular name? I have no idea who he is. What what's the story so, there? Do so you know? Kai Soto was supposed to be originally on the G League, the first ever G League Ignite team with Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga. Like okay. he was announced as one of the guys. Reason why he one of the reasons why he's popular is because basketball is incredibly popular in the Philippines." And he's a native of the Philippines. Okay. And like, so any player who like gets NBA adjacent, like is just going to have a huge following being from the gotcha. Philippines. Okay. He also played in the NBL for us, for the Adelaide 36ers. And he's been there the last couple of years. And like, he's a legitimate road. I'm looking at his numbers right now. He has like legitimate rotation numbers in the NBL. Uh, he's not an, from what I've seen, he's not an NBA player, but like he is the closest that like the Philippines has had to a Philippine born Filipino or Philippine born player gotcha. making it to the NBA. And, the, and he's only 21 years old. And so you combine that. He was in summer league with Orlando this year. I mean, played a little bit in a couple of games, uh, nothing to write home about, but like, that's why there is a fascination with Kai Soto. Yeah, I mean, it's not just the Bay Area. Like, someone in the chat wrote, there's a lot of Filipinos in the Bay Area. Probably true, but he's, like, a, like nationally, yeah. he gets attention. I mean, there's a – there's a, a one of the, some of the locked-on meetings we have, like, there's a running joke that if you just include Kai Soto in the headline of your podcast episode, you're going to get, like, thousands more views. Um, and I, I – thanks for explaining that because, honestly well, – Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just say from my experience in playing basketball in San Jose, like there's a great Filipino hoop culture in San Jose. I played with like a, a lot of a lot of really good Filipino basketball players growing up in San Jose and stuff. And like – so, yeah, it's uh, – and it, it's a huge – it's a huge sport in the Philippines. So, like, <laughs> you put all that together, there's a great Filipino population in the Bay Area – and that's where you're going to get the Kai Soto 
uh, love. There you go. AC in the chat writes, you got a new video title. I don't like, I don't like gimmicks though for, for success, but I don't, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but uh, Mr. Holder writes, uh, how do you feel? We'll wrap things up, Kev. I know you got to go, Kev. We'll, we'll, we got just a minute or two to go here. How do you feel about a second unit? And this is what likely is going to be the second unit for the Warriors of Chris Paul, Gary Payne, the second, I know Clay, I didn't see Clay in there. Well, well, he's suggesting Clay Thompson uh, coming off the bench. Kaminga and Dario Saric. In reality, Clay is going to start, but the, the 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 likely second unit will be Moses Moody instead of Clay. Well, no, uh, so second unit doesn't necessarily mean all all bench players. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, like so, yeah, yeah. So, like, Clay can start and be in the second unit. Right. It's just Snap like for him. Yeah. Like starting the second quarter, he's going to take his break earlier than Stephen Curry. Is basically what Mister Holder is saying. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a better second unit than what they had last year. Nice I think Jonathan game. Kaminga is going to take a big step forward. I think Moses Moody is going to take. Uh, he, I think I think Moses Moody is just going to continue to be Moses Moody and just a solid, solid role player. Um, and, and, and look, I think Jonathan Kaminga for vast stretches of last year, from like December on, for the most part, maybe had another lull after, but uh, like was significantly better than he was his rookie year even if the numbers don't say it like the raw counting numbers i thought he was significantly better yeah i'm with you um, I, to me it, let me i don't know if you just if you agree with this or not but to me if you just give uh, a kaminga the opportunity he will deliver meaning like like don't pull the leash if he has a bad start to a game, let him play through that. Like give him his 25 plus minutes a game. He will yeah, reward you. Can you can do right? that really much do easier that. in the regular season than you can in the playoffs. Like right. <laughs> right. I didn't necessarily disagree with Kaminga, like not playing a ton in the postseason. Like you got to win. And if he's not doing the things in that role that you need him to do to win, then you got to play somebody else. And is, that, is that company was, speak or is that, is that your speak? No, I mean, all right. I mean, it, like I'll, I'll accept it as company speak, but I do genuinely believe that. Like if you need Kaminga to rebound and he's not getting you a single rebound in a game, right. like that's not a good thing. Do you, like, do, do, let me ask you this. Do you think Kaminga, like if, if Kerr decides he's only, only going to play Kaminga, if Kaminga's like going to take on a, a power forward center slash like kind of a big inside type role, I don't see him as that player. I mean, I, I know he can I, I don't do necessarily it. either. Yeah, so, like, but I guess, like, what I'm trying to say is, like, I don't think you should hold, not play him if he's not, you know, gr being a rebounding machine out there. That's just not his game. I, I don't know. I, well, I, that, I think it needs to be more of his game just because of true. how athletic he is. True, right? Like, fair. he has the capability to get you seven, eight rebounds a game just based off, like, his – body type and like absolutely athletic agree. so like yeah I, I, in the regular season i say let him play through his mistakes like he needs to play through mistakes yeah in the postseason it's a different story and i i and like look i think he i think he's deserving of like I, I i haven't counted up the 240 minutes that are available on the court time you know he split out throughout the team but i do think he's worth at least mid-20s minutes easily yeah so easily. yeah i want to um, see a lot of coming in next year <laughs> I know you got to run. Uh, Zach H was flooding the chat with uh, trading Kavon Looney plus no. picks for Mitchell Ross. No, yeah, what are you doing, man? I just, I just didn't oh, want did him I? to think we were ignoring him. So, um, any did last uh, thoughts? I know you can follow you on Twitter at Kevin Four Wade. Uh, anything I'm, you want to promote? Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, something froze for me on my end when you were reading Looney and picks for Mitchell Robinson. I don't know if my response came in, but I do want to reiterate: no chance in hell. Yeah, we like, got it. We got okay, good. Because <laughs> I love Kevon Looney to death. And I think most Warrior fans do. And I think they realize how important and vital he is to winning basketball. Just because he does not look like your prototypical center doesn't mean he uh, – I mean, he helped win them an NBA title last year. He, Absolutely. he helped win them win an NBA title in 2018. He was a big reason why they got to the finals in 2019. Like – uh, we are, uh, we, I should say the Warriors. You can say that you work for the Warriors. I sometimes slip up and say that. And I immediately back. Uh, but I, I'm not on, I'm not, I'm not coaching or playing. I, I don't right. like, I don't like saying we, I don't like saying we. Oh, um, totally. Kevin, I love you, man. I think everyone who watches this knows that, you know, that, um, let's get you back on soon. Sorry. We didn't get to all the questions. I know there's people were asking about Lester Quinones and training camp. We'll save that for a future show. Kevin, love you, brother. Um, we'll yeah, we'll we'll do dinner now that you're finally free. 
uh, and we'll be, we'll get you back on the show soon, man. If if you're down, um, sounds good. Yeah. Love thank you, man. you side guy. Now, thank you everyone for for joining the show today. Thanks again to Kevin Dana. We'll be back at it soon. Peace out, later's.